Hi, I'm Natalie Murray. I'm a retired police officer and freelance forensic artist. This is me and this is my website. This is my book that was published this year on digital forensic art techniques that I demonstrate in Corel Painter. So today I'm going to talk about aging a face. The image that I'm going to use is taken from smalltownnoir.com so I thank them for the permission to use that booking photo today. This is a drawing of one of their booking photos talking today about muscles of expression and muscles of mastication. So I'm going to draw the muscles on this head and then show you what those muscles do and how those affect the face in aging. So muscles have one purpose and that purpose is just to pull. They don't push, they only pull. And for your entire life they just pull and release, pull and release, pull and release and that's all they do. There's a muscle on your forehead that's called the frontalis and it sits approximately here on one half of your head. I'm just going to draw on one half to make it quicker. The fibers of the muscle run in this direction so that this muscle can pull upwards, pull your eyebrow upwards on your forehead and then it releases and it pulls and releases, pulls and releases. As you get older the muscle gets a little more tired and the fibers get a little more tired and then it starts to maybe not be quite as firm and taut as it used to be and the fibers get a little looser. Now consider also what's sitting on top of the muscle is your skin. And so your skin also does not stay as taut as it used to be and it gets a little bit looser. As it gets loose it starts to drape and then as it drapes, just like a piece of fabric, it'll form wrinkles. And the wrinkles that it forms are going to go perpendicular to the direction of the fibers. So they will go in this direction, just like a piece of fabric. But it's not going to go just straight across because what it is sitting on is not straight, it's a curved surface. So they would go curved like this except that it's not only curved in one direction. You notice that this skull has an edge here where the temple bone starts and it comes up and then you'll see it has a dip there where this brow ridge is so it comes up and then it dips in and then it goes across and then it comes back down again. So there's a lot of complexity going on in here. And then as it comes up here, there's also a bit of a uh, bossing up here. It, it has a, a, the bone has a bump. It bumps out in the center here. And so it will go up there. So there's a lot happening underneath. It's not just one straight across line. So you have to keep in mind what's going on with the bone underneath as we talk about each of the wrinkles on the face. But we'll start with the frontalis, as I discussed. This is the muscle that runs up and down and lifts the eyebrow. We'll move on to the corrugator which runs through here. The corrugator runs this direction and it pulls the eyebrows together to form a frown. And the procerus is also right next to the corrugator here. The procerus uh, originates in the skin over the nose and it creates a horizontal wrinkle across the nose bridge this way. The temporalis out here, you're not really going to see a lot of wrinkles out there. This mostly gives you a, a heft and a thickness to the outer part of the skull. So as you get older that can waste away a little and you might get some thinning of the skull in that area. Now this is the orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis meaning orbiting, going around. Oculi meaning the eye. So this is the muscle that goes around the eye. This is a sphincter muscle and much like the other sphincter muscle you're thinking of right now, this is intended to uh, pull down into one tiny little opening. And it would do that on your eye to protect your eye from the elements except for the two tarsal plates that form your eyelids. And these are stiff tarsal plates that prevent this sphincter muscle from closing down in, into one tiny little opening on your face. So they also prevent it from forming wrinkles where the tarsal plates are located through here around the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid. It's, it's preventing them from forming those wrinkles very well either. The only place that the wrinkles could form very well are through the area where the tarsal plates join, the inner and outer corners. So that's where you get your crow's feet. You don't get it as much on the inner side. There's not a lot of fat through there. You notice that when you uh, touch the inner portion uh, where your eye attaches to the nose, it's, it's directly on bone. So mostly where you're going to get wrinkles are out here where the crow's feet are. What happens on the upper and lower eyelids are the muscles sag and so you'll get bagging under the eyes. When you get older your skin gets more delicate and thinner and so you'll see some of that happening through here. And then on the upper area it starts to sag down as the muscle gets uh, 
less taut and it'll sag down over the eyelid. So when we come over to the upper part of the face, I'll show you how that translates to aging. I've gotten rid of the hair up here and put these transverse frontal lines across the frontalis. And then through here, the corrugator and the procerus, you can see those lines coming in there. I've dipped down this where the orbicularis oculi muscle would sag down over the eyelid. Got a couple little crow's feet outside on the edge and then the sagging through the bottom of the lower eyelid through there. I've also dimmed the eye down so it's not as sharp and bright as it is in a younger person. Aging gives you a macular degeneration and other diseases of the eye which makes your eye not as bright so that can also be something that happens. And with, uh, with men, often your eyebrows get bushier and maybe crazier. Uh, you get some long eyebrow hairs that go kind of nuts here and there. Um, so you can put that in. The eyebrow itself falls. It isn't as high as it once was. And I put in a couple of age spots as well on him. So when we come back here and go to the mid face area, and what we get are the muscles coming from the nose down to the mouth area. So this guy here is called the levator labii alicae nasi. Levator is like elevator, so it lifts, it goes up. Labii meaning lip, alicae meaning wing, and nasi meaning nose, so lifting the lip and the wing of the nose is what this muscle here does. And so it is going to wrinkle perpendicular to the way that it goes, which is this way. So it's going to form these wrinkles between the nose and the mouth which is the same thing as the levator labii superioris does. So you're getting these, uh, it's called the nasolabiofuro between the nose and the mouth. You see it a little bit in the younger age here, but it's going to get a lot stronger when it gets older. And then we have the zygomaticus major and minor out here, the minor on the inside and the major on the outside. And these pull the upper, pull the upper lip up and back towards the zygomatic bone out here. And so showing the mid-face aging would be through here. So I've, I've come through and deepened this nasolabio furrow and then also made this guy a little bit thinner through the side, losing some of the fat as he's getting older through here and adding some just lines to show that his skin isn't uh, necessarily as clean and crisp. It's, it's getting a little bit wrinkly through here, a little bit uh, more aged and uh, a little bit more rough through here. I've also, if you can notice here, I've pulled his nose and his ears down a little bit. As you age, your ears and nose get longer. Okay, so coming back to this guy, we have the orbicularis oris, orbicularis going around, oris meaning mouth, same thing as the orbicularis oculi. It's a sphincter muscle too, but since you don't have the tarsal plates, it will allow your mouth to pull down into a tiny little opening to protect your face. And since you don't have the tarsal plates, you can squeeze it down into a tiny little opening, which then will allow you to wrinkle all the way around. Your lips will get wrinkled all the way around. The more that you do that, the more that you suck on a cigarette or on a straw, the more wrinkled you'll get the older you are. But the orbicularis oris is uh, not attached to bone anywhere. The lower part of your face is a lot more mobile than the upper part of your face. So then we have the masseter out here is involved in the movement of the mandible that allows you to chew. And the buccinator out here is used for uh, sucking and blowing and also throws food back up on the surface of the teeth. And then the rhizorius out here pulls your lips back straight. And then uh, opposite of the levators up here that pull up. We have the depressors that pull down. So this is the depressor anguli oris that pulls down. The anguli means angle and oris of the mouth. Depressor anguli oris pulls down the corner of the mouth. The depressor labii, labii meaning lip, pulls down the lip and the mentalis and that is going to pull up the lip in the middle. So the mentalis uh, is this area of the chin. Okay, so showing the lower face aging would be this. You lose the, uh, the sharp line here on the chin, and so this becomes sort of a little less uh, defined through there. Uh, your mouth gets more wrinkles, obviously, all the way around, and then the line of the mouth uh, starts to also lengthen in the outside. The thickness of your lips gets thinner as well. You lose the uh, vermilion, the red area of your lips gets a lot thinner. And then uh, you get the lines on your neck and your neck can get stringier looking, uh, less fat through it. And as you get even older, you can lose 
thickness in the mandible, this, this jawbone, you can lose teeth and the bone itself can lose uh, thickness. So your mandible can get smaller and the lower part of your face can look a lot smaller than the upper part. So I hope that's helped you with some knowledge on uh, how to age a face and thanks for watching.